championships. Uh, get excited, everybody. This is going to be a really cool match between two different decks, two great players. Um, I'm really excited to see how it's going to go. Yeah, don't worry, y'all. Your patience will be rewarded here because we are going to see Gustavo versus Yasuyuki, and it is going to be uh, the kind of ability Zard, uh, which we say that now, but it's just going to be basically a fire toolbox deck. Yes, of course. It's definitely transitioned away from just being focused around that Charizard and... Uh, Sorry, Reshiram and Charizard GX card and plays a whole host of different uh, fire type attackers. You know, basic Pokemon, GX, GX Tag Team, V Pokemon, everything bundled up into one deck. So it's really exciting. But then, of course, I think even more exciting, especially for you, is <laughs> Yasuyuki's deck, where we talked about it a little before, but it is going to be that kind of slumbering forest mill deck. Uh, it uses Lelba, and it was kind of the original uh, list before the Chinchino version. Yeah, and so we're seeing the prize cards of both players there, and I think that Bell Elba uh, being in the prize cards there really shows you what kind of yeah. deck he's definitely <laughs> playing and kind of uh, sign boast for that. But here we go, players about to kick off the match, uh, and it looks like it'll be Yasuyuki starting us off with a Girafferig in the active Ooh. spot. That's certainly not a card that we have seen uh, this tournament. And you actually see him breathe a sigh of relief. His hand was very hampered by this no supporter turn one rule. And drawing that Slugma off the top of the deck means he will not have the chance of just losing next turn. And it looks like he just attaches a fire energy and has to pass. So really awkward start there. Not able to find more basic Pokemon. Not able, able to kick off his strategy. <laughs> oh, speaking of awkward starts here, though, Gustavo's hand is not looking too hot. It's just another attach. And then I think we'll see a burn here. Oh, no, the thing Vulcan can't attack. Which is pretty good, but get loss is not very uh, useful when your opponent doesn't play anything. And so for those tuning in, this is not how these decks usually, <laughs> usually run, that's for sure. We're usually seeing uh, your acceleration of fire energy from the side of Gustavo Wada. We're usually seeing a bit more of a setup from the side of Yasuyuki, but you know, some, giving some love to some of those cards that we don't usually see. But then we have, see uh, Cynthia and Caitlin to draw three cards for Yasuyuki. He's oh, there it is, the third card off that Cynthia and Caitlin. Zashi and V, the poster boy for this uh, this set, I think. Yeah, uh, its Intrepid Sword ability is going to allow Yasuyuki to be able to just continue drawing cards and get his setup going, and really going to force Gustavo to try to draw something off the top of his deck here. And there we see Yasuyuki has actually drawn into that Mareep, so he'll be able to start putting uh, Gustavo Wada's Pokemon to sleep next turn. Gustavo looks like he's retreating that uh, Volpix, going to play a giant Hearth. Yeah, so this is pretty great. The, the Retreat and then the Giant Hearth discarding another fire. He'll be able to use uh, Victini V's attack Spreading Flame to charge up the Turtonator or the Volpix uh, if he chooses to. Looks like he's searching through his deck. And a quick look. Obviously, he saw pretty quickly the cards that he wanted to see in there. I'm uh, just going to shuffle up and play. We we're expecting to see that Flickering Flame... Uh, attack there, putting down the three energy cards. Yeah, and it's very important to actually get those energy back into play because of the threat of Giraffe Rig on the opponent's side of the field. So Yasuyuki here, he does get down that Mareep. Oh, there's one of your favorite cards, Slumbering Forest. Nice synergy with that Mareep there. Mareep being able to put uh, the opponent's active Pokemon to sleep and Slumbering Forest uh, forces the player to flip two coins. And if either of them are tails, they stay asleep. But Yasuyuki here, sort of searching through his deck. This is the kind of deck that has a lot of different pieces to it. So he's probably having a look and thinking, what exactly have I got prized? What exactly, what tools do I have to work with here? Well, he's eyeing down that Oranguru from Sword and Shield. It's Primate Wisdom ability, being able to put a card from his hand onto the top of his deck and take the card from the top of his deck into his hand. And it's just an insane combo with Smooth Over from Makargo. Yeah, it looks like he's got that combo now. So Makargo Smooth Over is now down on the uh, field. As well as that Oranguru with the Primate Wisdom. Smooth Over? Looks oh, like it might hit the bench as well. Bench? Smooth Over? And it, now we have the setup that Yasuyuki has been looking for. Uh, it's a pretty strong turn three here. Yeah, off that turn one that didn't look like it was much going on. Uh, it looks like he's really bounced two. back from that. Yes, this is, this is turn two, and already he's got some stage one set up, which is pretty impressive, I'd say, in this format. Yeah, especially with the way Gustavo has been drawing these first two turns. 
Roaming the wisdom. Uh, just some bench management. Looks a lot nicer when Mareep's on the side. <laughs> well, yeah, he's going to be the guy that you're bringing up a yeah, lot of more. Course. Efficient movements. Okay, you also see Tag Call, one of the best cards for this deck, being able to search for a draw supporter that also gets you your Belalba's back. And you know what? It also gets Belalba as well. Yeah, uh, Cynthia and Caitlyn and Belalba looking like they're the choices with that Tag Call. And you've got to think that Gustavo is sitting across thinking, oh, yes, now I know what's going on. I know all <laughs> these cards, all these pieces are in play. I at least saw a Giraffe Rig before, so it wasn't quite so clear. But, yep, Belalba sort of, you know, it's a um, clear indicator that you're playing against a deck that's looking to sort of mill you out or, you know, I haven't used discard cards yet, from right? your deck. Oh. Yeah, and Gustavo does have one thing going for him, is that he's just going to be able to start attacking now. Uh, the more fire energy he attaches to that Victini V, the more damage he's going to do, uh, to where he's just going to essentially knock out every single Pokemon Yasuki has. So he's really going to have to go for that sleep. Yep, and so we see that uh, that's exactly what Yasuyuki does. He, just, he retreats his Giraffe Rig and goes into the Mareep and puts Gustavo to sleep. Now, does Gustavo have many ways to get around this sort of sleep effect? Well, so he has five outs, essentially. Uh, four switch, which we see in most decks nowadays. And then he has one escape board that he has access to, which allows you to retreat when you are asleep. And, of course, he can also flip two coins and hope that they're both heads. And yeah, that's a lot up, to ask so for, though. But that's what we're going to see here. And uh, see, there's tails. You just don't even, you don't even need to flip the other one. You're like, oh, man, okay. Yeah. <laughs> nah, it, it, it's done, unfortunately. I'm, I'm a little jet-lagged, going to sleep. We've got to switch into uh, the... Volpix, but then a quick retreat, just to get a fire energy in the discard yeah. pile. And this is where Yasuyuki is going to have to play the time game here, where he's going to have to mill Gustavo out before Gustavo is going to be able to take these six prizes. He's going to have to make sure he goes through all four switch, the escape board. Looks like he's thinking about what's in his hand here, doing a little few calculations. I like think that Victini V is quite oppressive. And then we see a uh, Lily's Poke Doll as well. I'm not sure that we've seen that yet this, across the course of this tournament yet. Yeah, it's a super strong card reminiscent of Robo Substitute from sets prior, but it's a very strict upgrade where it does the same thing. When it's knocked out, your opponent does not take a prize card. But instead of discarding it, instead of like to retreat, you can actually put it on the bottom of your deck. So it's also another way to not deck out after a Belalba Bryson Man. Yeah, pretty interesting. And then we see a Cynthia Caitlin where Yasuyuki is going to roll three cards off that. And I wonder if it's exactly what he's looking for. He does have access to Smooth Over as well, which I don't believe we've seen him play just yet. So that Smooth Over with Primate Wisdom. And there we go, right on cue. That is a combination he is able to use. Put one card to the top of his deck. And then with Primate Wisdom, he can effectively draw that card. Yeah, I'm down. Looks like Mareep or Air Balloon. Both could be pretty good choices, but Air Balloon will allow him to retreat the Giraffe Rig into the Lily's Poke Doll this turn. But again, he's going to have to watch out to see if Gustavo can actually set up Nine Tails, probably the biggest card in this matchup. Yeah, we spoke about that Nine Tails er earlier with that Nine Temptations, being able to effectively gust a Pokemon from the bench up to the active spot. Yasuyuki here playing Quick Ball. There's still basic Pokemon in his deck that he must be looking for. Set up a few extra pieces. Choosing to get rid of that Bell Elber and Bryson Man. Yeah, and there's the Mareep that he was eyeing down earlier. Now has everything going for him that he wants. Hope Gustavo does not have access to another switch or flipping two heads. As we discussed earlier, four switch and an escape board on the deck, so there are some outs uh, available to him. That is Gustavo to be able to get that Victini out of the active position. I find it pretty interesting to see a uh, you know, Charizard and Reshiram GX with so few Pokemon on the board and so few energy as well. It's very counter to its usual uh, strategy. But there we see an Air Balloon coming down onto the Giraffe Rig. And now he has the option here. He can try to go for the Mareep, put him asleep with that fluffy pillow ability, or retreat into Lily's Poke Doll and hope your opponent doesn't actually draw into the Ninetales here. And it looks like he goes for the Poke Doll. Oh, he puts um, it to the bottom. Yeah, puts it back in his deck and swiftly promotes the Mareep and puts that Victini V. He's like, psych, to sleep. got ya. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gustavo here, it's going to have to find a switch, an escape board. Uh, he does need to flip to see if he does wake oh, up. There's oh, there's another but he switch. switch. Oh, man. And a professor's research here from Gustavo, drawing him seven cards. That's exactly what he wants to see. Discarding a few cards that he might not really need in this uh, matchup, something like that Megalopunny. He's not facing a deck that has many GX Pokemon. 
Yeah, Whole hand zero. to work with now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Whole hand to work with now, but it's the same tried and true strategy. Promote Vulpix, retreat for one energy, and take a prize with Victini V. Yeah, and the fact that he didn't have to discard any excess switch, he's able to use them to get two knockouts straight away. Um, it, it's going to put Yasuyuki on the back burner here. He's going to really have to try to combo some stuff together to get around this Victini V. Yeah, it definitely feels like he's under quite a lot of pressure, pressure uh, Yasuyuki. It's going to smooth over again, looking at any card in his deck and putting it on the top. Quite nice synergy with that Lily's Pokedoll in some ways, able to you know, put it to the bottom of your deck, but then just find it again and put it back to the top. It's like a game of hide and seek. <laughs> Except you find them every time. <laughs> I didn't say it was a good game. Like. A couple of different supporter options in his hand as well, Yasuyuki. So he's going to go for a Lieutenant Surge and then the Caitlyn uh, Cynthia, discarding a Zashi and V. Yeah, uh, a couple of different supporter options. Why not just do all of them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, with Lieutenant Surge strategy. All right, there is the three off that, Cynthia and Caitlyn. And his hand size is just growing and growing, and that is the power of Intrepid Sword and all these combination of cards together. Uh, and if your opponent doesn't have access to reset stamps or Marnies or Judge, you're really just super oppressive. So it looks like there that um, Yasuyuki put a Wobbuffet back on the top of his deck with uh, Primate Wisdom and then decided to discard it with Bell Elba. And Bryson Man again, the power of that primate intrepid wisdom. Sword. Yeah, it's, it's pretty his good. turn with an intrepid sword. All right, now it's back on Gustavo. Does have a pretty good hand himself from that research the turn before. Oh, finds the nine temptations, nine tails. And this is where things are going to start getting a little dicey here for Yasuyuki, uh, especially with the fiery flint and a couple fires in Gustavo's hand already. Uh, it plays 18 of those, so Ooh. most of the time he's going to have those two fire Do you think that's enough? Energy. Do you think 18 is enough? It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, going back to the days of, you know, 20 Pokemon, 20 trainers, 20 <laughs> energy. We're, we're getting there. We're close. Oh, isn't that how you build decks now? Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, I thought that was standard. <laughs> so it looks like an attachment goes to the Victini V, and we're using that Nine Temptations uh, ability to bring up the Zashian V to the active position on uh, Yasuyuki's side of the field. Yeah, and this is where Gustavo really pulls ahead, gets those two prizes off this knockout here. I think it's only been three or four turns, and he's already down to two prizes. This is a pretty dominant uh, display from Gustavo. Yeah, and starting with nothing, too, and it's just the power of Victini V to charge itself up, and then it's like, oh, this is all I need. <laughs> and we're going to see the power of Nine Tails as well. We just saw it. Very, very powerful card that we were hyping up before. Now, what can Yasuyuki do here? He's leading with a po uh, Lily's Pokedoll in the active position. So he's going to have to try to combo together more Marie sl uh, Slumbering Forest. Uh, it's really his only way to actually combat Nine Temptations. If you don't put your opponent's Pokemon to sleep and like they don't have a way out of it, uh, they're going to wreck through your entire board. I'm not seeing any ways that he can actually search for uh, basic Pokemon with certainty. There is a great ball there. Smooth over. But of course, when you smooth over, you can get anything. It's not bad. Not bad. He's looking through his deck. I don't actually see any Mareeps left in there. Yeah, eyeing down that Ordinary Rod, one of the new cards to come out of Sword and Shield, being able to put back two Pokemon and or two basic energy as well from your discard into your deck. Uh, one of the few things we've been missing for a while is some like nice recovery. Looks like he's putting a uh, Makago onto the top of the deck. Seems to be his choice for with that smooth over. See what kind of strategy that uh, Yasuyuki's going for here. Well, he does have a couple Slugma, the Ditto, in his hand. But Could is it too little, too late? That's the only thing. Yes, you can get as many cards as you want to the top of your deck. But, uh, you know, if they're not achieving knockouts, if they're not disrupting the opponent in the way that you want them to, the way that your deck's designed to... Oh, <laughs> cannot bench that Makargo. Uh, got another Slug, that's okay. Yeah, but again, like you said, this is looking very bad here for Yasuyuki. Again, his deck is not one that's going to take prizes, so the prize count doesn't really matter for him, even though it's two to six. But Gustavo's taken four, and it's yeah. been three turns. Yeah. And it comes down to Slumbering Forest. But he definitely wants to see a Mareep. Four turns, my mistake. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mareep's going to be the biggest point here. He has a quick ball to be able to find it, but no Mareep's in deck. 
Well, here we go. Lieutenant Surge allowing two more supporters for the turn. It's going to have to try to just hope to mill him out here. Does look like Gustavo has quite a large deck. Still, lots of cards in there. Well, that's the benefit of, you know, not having anything turn <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah. You don't really have to play anything. Not playing down Pokemon, not, you know, accelerating energy. It's actually quite a good strategy. All right, here is the last supporter for the turn, and Ordinary Rod gets discarded. Switch gets uh, discarded on Gustavo Wada's side. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, which, you know, if there was a Marief in play, I'd say that was quite a significant, significant card to be discarded, but... Looks like Yasuyuki's going to palpad back in. Bell Elber and Bryson Man, two of them. Hope to find those and continue that mill strategy against Gustavo. Looks back in a couple more supporters as well. Is that Lieutenant Surge? Yeah, I mean, this is the game plan that Yasuyuki really needs to try for. It's what his deck is built to do, and it's just Lieutenant Surge, Belova and Bryson Man, Belova and Bryson Man. Next turn, I'm going to Lieutenant Surge. Global and Bryson Man, Global and Bryson Man. Uh, but it just might be too little too late. Gustavo is taking a prize this turn, taking a prize next turn, as long as he has four fire energy, essentially. Yeah, and that's really what it comes down to. Uh, we're going to have to see in his hand whether he has access to those fire energy, if he's able to get off that nine temptations uh, ability each time. Uh, for what I saw last turn, he did the fiery flint, and then he also had two in his hand as well, so it's stocked full. Ooh, you even have the Welder with that Victini Prism Star. Drawing three cards here. Seeing most of his deck, he's not worried about Mill. He's just going to continue to draw. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you Mill all my fire, I'll just shuffle him back in with Victini. But it does mean he only has one fire energy in his hand. Oh, that currently. is true. So here we see he's going to uh, retreat the Victini yep. V and send in a different Victini, which is the Victini Prism Star. Uh, Looks like he's going to be using that Infinity Attack. Yeah, this is an interesting play from Gustavo. He's kind of uh, playing it safe. He, he's seeing that his opponent has kind of got their deck down low to where they're just going to blow up and Bryson Man every turn. And depending on how small his deck was, you're like, okay, well, I saw that Wobbuffet in the discard that shuts off Prism Stars from attacking. If he gets that in play, I can't even attack with Victini Prism. I'm running out of energy here. Might as well guarantee that I'm going to have energy for the rest of the game to Nine Temptations and just seal it from there. Yeah, it's quite a calculated, sort of slower game plan um, that ultimately could just be the difference between him winning and losing here. Oh, here's the ordinary rod from Yasuyuki here. It's very big. Yeah, looks like he's choosing to go with uh, the Wobbuffet, actually. So Wobbuffet and two fire energy. Deciding against, perhaps, selecting those Mareeps. Well, there's, there's one, one. Mareep. They get shuffled back into the deck. I think he has a few more things to do. Has access to smooth over Pokemon communication and the quick ball. So plenty of options here for Yasuyuki. He will be able to find that Mareep and he will be able to retreat with that air balloon on the giraffe rig. But is it enough, Jeremy? Is it enough to bring out a Mareep at this point in the game? And hope it, that it the be. opponent there's, stays asleep? There's three switch down. So uh, that could be the thing that yeah, so Yuki's just like, all right, uh, if I have those three switched down, I'm going to play another Bulalba and Bryson Man, and if I mill another switch, then you have no more switch. Maybe I mill an escape board as well, and sometimes you can just lock your opponent out if they don't have any resources left. Yeah, so what seemed like a very dominating start from Gustavo has now potentially swung back to uh, Yasuyuki's favor. He's definitely pre he's preferenced that Wobbuffet, finding that Wobbuffet. Come back. Well, the Wobbuffet does essentially uh, no. do some of the same thing where, yeah, your active Pokemon can't attack because it's that Prism Star. Bench. Kind of force him to waste more energy, uh, retreat to the Victini V on the bench. Yeah, the question is whether Gustavo can actually find all the energy he needs to be able to close out this game. Or if Yasuyuki can disrupt him, stall him enough, mill enough cards uh, to get the victory does find the Mareep off that Great Ball, looking at the top seven cards of the deck and selecting one Pokemon, and luckily enough, he found Mareep. Yeah, a little bit uh, sketchy there because there's just the one Mareep, but I think he only had like 10, 11 cards in the deck, so pretty good odds of finding it. Yeah, roll of the dice there. But All right, so this is kind of another catch-all here. It's like, okay, I got the Wobbuffet to mean you can't attack, but now I have the Mareep to put you to sleep. 
So get out of both. Yeah, so it's really relying on Gustavo to hit that double heads on Slumbering Forest uh, for the sleep check. Uh, but also finding that switch or burning energy to manually retreat. Uh, well, he manually retreated with the air balloon uh, giraffe. Oh, on Gustavo's side. To oh, Gustavo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, if he just finds fire energy, though, perhaps he can just attack something on the bench. Uh, he can bring up the Wobbuffet, attack that with uh, Victini. Wobbuffet's effect only uh, coming into play when it's on the bench, so... Lots of deck management going on by uh, Yasuyuki here. He's going to play a Bell Elba, and he actually hits a few energy cards on the side of Gustavo. Well, pretty good odds to hit when half of his deck is fire energy now, but uh, seeing three of them hit the bin is pretty good to see here for Yasuyuki. Yeah, and it's sort of all part of his, uh, his strategy to win. He's going to see, going to want to see more of those fire energy hitting the discard pile from those Bell Elba and Bryson Mans. And actually, Gustavo's Victini stays asleep, so that's one part of Yasuyuki's plan that's coming uh, to fruition here. Step one, complete. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's quite a few steps in those steps, though. It's, it's a 100-step st process <laughs> yeah. to win the game, but well, he's going to try to get there. Step one, yeah. and then goes the Slumbering Forest, so it's actually been countered by Gustavo's uh, giant hearth there. To be fair, it did its job. Yes, it, it did. Yeah. It was able to keep the Victini asleep for at least one turn. And granted, you still have to roll heads just for one dice instead now. And you can see Gustavo, he just had a little count of how many cards were actually in his deck. Um, just thinking, oh, how many turns do I have left to be able to achieve my win condition? It looks like he's going to use nine temptations there. Bringing Playing up. two fire to bring up Macargo. Yeah, so this has, I believe, three retreat. Uh, so air balloon won't be enough. Uh, he's going to have to find air balloon in combination with another energy. Now Yasuyuki's turn to uh, count Gustavo's deck. Just thinking, what do I need to do to be able to, to achieve the win here? And it looks like there's quite a few cards in there. Not enough for something like a Makago GX to uh, seal the win on, on this turn if he was able to uh, achieve that GX move. Well, yeah, so that's the thing. Uh, you, especially when playing against a, a mill deck like this, where they're going to be going Blubba and Bryson Man, mill three. But then they're going to have turns where they're going to go Lieutenant Surge, double Blubba and Bryson Man, mill six. He actually has access to mill 11 cards in one turn with the Surge, two Bulelbas, and a Macargo GX attack. Yeah, that's more than a sixth of a deck. Yeah. So that's quite a lot of cards. Um, it's something that I'm sure Gustavo is very aware of happening as well. Looks like Yasuyuki, he's going to continue to try to execute that game plan. Palpad gets back two of those Bell Elber and Bryson Mans uh, back into his deck so he can continue to uh, discard Gustavo's deck and hopefully get it down to the state where he can actually uh, achieve that, you know, big turn of discarding all his cards. It looks like it was a Caitlyn and Cynthia uh, and a Bell Elber and Bryson Man. Got shuffled back into the deck. <laughs> Look, looking to use Smooth <laughs> Over, but it's in the active. Don't worry, you're still able to use it. <laughs> looking, eyeing down that Cynthia and Caitlyn tag team supporter. It's just another way, right, to get more supporters back into the deck, but also to draw cards as well. Yeah. So. And uh, it, it's probably the best way. He was eyeing down uh, the Lieutenant Surge with the pal pad. But the Cynthia and Caitlyn will get you more cards and get the Lieutenant Surge in your hand for next turn. And you even see that Macargo GX in Yasuki's hand as well. He's really hoping to set up a big turn next turn. So he discards the Great Ball, recognizing that there may not be too many other Pokemon that he's looking for in deck uh, at this stage of the game. Those three cards. And he did find an energy as well. So he does have the option to actually retreat the Macargo here in the active. But he's going to need that energy for the GX attack next turn if he wants to even try to attempt that. And you've got to wonder how many energy cards he has left as well, because this deck typically doesn't play that many. Well, he did Ordinary Rod 2 back. So uh, he at there least There are at least has, two. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, one thing that's like great of note is does have access to Giant Hearth in play. Opted not to use it. Looks like it's just a pass, so that Makago is stuck in the active position, and straight away, Gustavo gets out those two fire energy with Giant Hearth and says, all right, now I can probably just knock out whichever Pokemon I'm looking for. They sound a Jirachi there. Two fire energy in hand for Gustavo as well. It'll be interesting to see how many... So, 
there's at least five in the discard, right? The three from the Belelba. Oh, no, so there's more. Yeah, so this is a great knockout. Bringing up the Wobbuffet into the active spot shuts off its ability. And then the Victini Prism Star is able to attack and take the knockout. Gustavo is now at one prize left. Yeah, just needs one more prize to uh, take game one of this round three. And it looks like, a, you know, never want to say 100% certainty, but it looks like it's a, a pretty good bet that he's going to be able to uh, take that last knockout. What it may come down to is Yasuyuki's Mareep putting these, uh, the Victini to sleep and then saying, all right, can you find that switch or not? Or can I uh, discard cards from your deck faster than you can find that switch? And there we go. So it looks like he's putting uh, the Victini to sleep, of course. Mareep, it's a great ability when it's in the active position. It can just put the opponent to sleep and it doesn't end your turn or require any other you know, discarding of cards or anything like that. So this is the, the interesting part here, too, is... With the way Yasuki's hand is shaped right now, I don't know if he's going to be able to get the Lily's Poke Doll into the active spot to put down onto the bottom of the deck. So might we see a... He might have to be forced to retreat the Mareep in the active... Oh, but he still does have the Air Balloon. Okay. Yeah, that was the biggest... Because he needs the energy attachment for the Macargo GX, but also to retreat as well. Uh, so yeah, the air balloon coming in big. Then we find the doll, of course. It's put straight down onto the bench. All right, so he actually does have the mill 11 uh, this turn if he chooses to. Gets the Lily's Poke Doll. He's going to surge. Belelba. Oh, looks like it's a pass. It's a Must pass from Yasuyuki. And, and then he actually flips heads, oh, no. so the big teeny is awake. All right, so this is the big moment. Two fire energy, do you have it? And of course, that giant hearth in play means yes. And Gustavo will be able to take game one here. Uh, it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, pretty exciting. In 25 what, minutes, too. Yeah, in what, what I would say was like a very odd start to the game, that's for sure. Like, it's not what we expected to see from both players. Uh, I believe Yasuyuki just started with Girafferig and then Lucky Slugma. And uh, on the side of Gustavo, maybe that was his game plan, not to play too many cards go. down, maybe just to oh, play yeah, that Victini V and make sure he can get a Nine Tails going as well. Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing that he had going for him was that his opening hand <laughs> or his opening draws essentially <laughs> had to switch for him. Yeah. Uh, okay. Being able to keep the pressure uh, going and take those Victini, knockouts and for. forcing his opponent to actually <laughs> like waste resources to get Mareep's back. Yeah, and another thing, if you've got Switch in your hand and your opponent playing Bell Elba Bryson, well, they're safe. They're actually yeah. safe. They're not in the deck. So, yeah, keep Switch definitely coming in clutch in that match. Uh, in uh, that game one, rather, sorry. We do actually have potentially <laughs> two more games to see of this matchup, and it will be interesting to see well, how I, the players approach this, kill, whether they're going to approach it differently, or if, you know, on Gustavo's <laughs> side, if he's thinking, oh, that was actually a great strategy for me. Just set up one Ninetales, one attacker that can just oh continuously God, attack. <laughs> Yeah, and there's no energy disruption uh, from Yasuki's side. Uh, so all the energy that's going to be going on, the Victini V or whatever <laughs> attacker that Gustavo decides to start with, uh, is really safe. So you're going to prioritize your Switch, your Skateboard, and your on. Nine Tails. But meanwhile, Yasuki, <laughs> he's kind of on the back foot I where the his one. best card, like one. general, that's like generally, is Zashi and yeah, that's I how he's going to build up that giant hand size and get his consistency you, engine going. But it, when his opponent's able to just discard yeah, two yeah, fire energy, yeah. bring up the Zashian, and take a knockout very easily, then that's essentially giving up two turns of your strategy. Yeah, really tricky. I mean, that Intrepid Sword, this yeah. kind of deck relies on that so much to just fill your hand size, get all the pieces you need to be able to continuously Bill Elber and Bryson Man, continuously you know, apply that pressure, keep the opponent asleep, have, get the smooth over Makago out, all those kinds of things. And ah. I think Gustavo eliminated that Pokemon, uh, you know, knocked it out pretty quickly. So yeah, that I option was off the table. I think like turn four, it was after two knockouts from two straight switches. It was all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, I'm now down to two prizes, good luck. Yeah, very, very oppressive. So yeah. here we can see the prizes of uh, Gustavo there. He's actually prized that Victini Prism Star. Of course, being one of those cards that you can only play one of in your deck. Yeah, and uh, without the Victini uh, Prism, I think Yasuyuki actually won that game one. Yeah. Uh, shuffled in upwards to 10 fire energy. Uh, and we saw there he had the mill 11 that last turn. 
but there was just too many cards in Kusava's deck. It could have happened. Yeah, thanks yeah. to that Victini. So, you know, Yasuyuki might have a little bit of an advantage in this in, in this game here. So, looking at his prizes... Nothing not too seeing, bad. Yeah, not seeing anything that's too uh, game-changing being priced there. Uh, okay. Potentially... Air Balloon, if he maybe starts with a Pokemon that, again, he doesn't want to start with, but he plays a few different copies of all these Pokemon. And speaking of which, that is probably a Pokemon ordinarily you wouldn't want to start with. What with it? No, yeah. Uh, it is really good in this matchup, but it's kind of awkward when you start Wobbuffet, uh, but having the Ditto Prism, it's actually the best thing for it Yeah. because you can actually evolve it. Yeah. Uh, Wobbuffet is shut off in the active with that shady tail. Yeah, this is one of those niche situations, I think. Uh, so... Much better start from Yasuyuki this game. He's actually already started with a quick ball and means he's able to get out that Zachi and V uh, and put that down onto the bench. So a few more Pokemon we're seeing this time. Does have to get rid of that slumbering forest though with that quick ball. Yeah, that's one thing we actually didn't really see. Gustavo was going so fast with these knockouts that Yasuyuki didn't have any time to actually set up resource management in Ranguru and try to get a lot of his resources rolling and get like his deck going. So this deck, interestingly, a couple of different Orin Gurus. So one with that Primate Wisdom and one with the Resource Management Attack. Uh, both very powerful and, you know, kind of synergistic in some ways. You know, they manipulate your deck, they put cards back in, they trade different cards. So Yeah, well, I think you were saying it before. This has to be one of the favorite Pokemon from uh, just the people who make cards in general because <laughs> it seems like almost every Orin Guru that they've released has been... Really good. Oh, really interesting uh, for Yasuyuki there. He intrepid sorted, but drew two pal pads and an ordinary rod. None Ooh. of those cards help you right now when you haven't put in uh, really that many cards into your discard pile that you know you want to get back into your hand or into your deck. So none of those are going to draw him cards next turn. Now on the side of uh, Gustavo, an interesting choice for a welder. Yeah, yeah, uh, welder attaching to the Dedene. It's really like, oh well, I don't really have much of anything else. Uh, but one thing you also, like some of these decks play is Heat Ran GX, being able to bring it to the active, move the fire to it, and it's essentially you just welder to that. And that's what we see him eyeing down with that quick ball here. Uh, probably another really good attacker in this matchup. So we sort of asked, oh, what does Gustavo want to, want to start with this game? And it's sort of like, sometimes you don't get to choose. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like the Dedene was just put in the active spot uh, by no choice of Gustavo. There's a switch. And like yeah, we're going to see a turn one knockout here. Heat Ran GX putting in a ton of work yep. in combination with Welder. So it is a knockout, but it is also one switch down. That is true, yeah. It looks like uh, Yasuyuki is going to put in a Ditto Prism Star into the active position now. Now, one thing Yasuyuki didn't actually get to have in play was some Slugmas. The Ditto Prism able to evolve into Mech Cargo if he wants to, but... He's really going to, oh, and speak of <laughs> it and it shall appear. Slugma now hits the board. But there's not a lot else going on in Yasuyuki's hand. I can't really see many uh, draw options to draw. I think it was actually the Primate Wisdom that it was his option to draw a card. A couple of Palpad, a reset stamp. Yeah, it looks like he just has to Intrepid Sword. A little awkward here. Not having access to Smooth Over means his engine isn't really in play. And Gustavo... He's really digging for the, the Vulpix. Similarly to last game, very similar strategy. Play down one attacking Pokemon and set up that Ninetales. It looks like he found that Vulpix off that Pokemon communication. Putting one Pokemon back and collecting any Pokemon from your deck that you want to. Vulpix can go straight down to the bench and it's ready next turn to evolve into a Ninetales. Yeah, uh, all the hype around Quick Ball yep. being one of the best uh, searches we have now. Granted, Gustavo still plays for Quick Ball, but Pokemon Communication is one of those catch-all where you're able to get those basics, but you're able to get that Ninetales as well. Something like Evolution Incense, kind of too linear for this deck. Yeah. Not many options in yes uh, Yasuyuki's hand here. Lots of disruption. Things like Bell Elba and Bryson. Reset Stamp. I think we're going to need to see this break ball hit a Macargo to try to smooth over something with Primate Wisdom. Oh, oh there it is. Oh, he does find it. All right, so this kind of opens up Yasuki's hand a little bit better. But granted, he's still on the back foot, especially staring down that Vulpix that could just become a Ninetales, and Nine Temptations just start wrecking his board. 
interesting to see what he's going to smooth over here. What does he think his, op his best option is to deal with this Heatran that's bearing down upon him with all this energy? Able to effectively get knockouts on anything on his board, especially that, you know, Zashian V being weak to fire. Yeah, uh, there's a couple options that you can go for. Uh, if you're kind of like, I need a little bit more time, go for Lily's Polka Doll. Uh, you can also try to get that Slumbering Forest Marie kind of set up, but I don't really know if his hand is really that good for it. Like it's you said, there's a lot of, like, retroactive stuff in his hand. Yeah, it's interesting you say that, because the two cards that he's just holding from his deck <laughs> are Lily's Polka Doll and Marie. So he's obviously having the same uh, train of thought that you're having there. I know what I'm talking about sometimes. <laughs> able to get that card straight away with Oranguru's Primate Wisdom, getting his strategy a little bit online. It's interesting how long Yasuyuki's turns take. He's got so many pieces he has to piece together. And comparatively, Gustavo's just thinking, yep, attach, sometimes <laughs> switch, get a knockout. Attach. Can I find Nine Tails this turn? No? <laughs> All right, attack. <laughs> it actually, he, uh, Yasuyuki went for the Lily's Poke Doll. He's opting for that to put that in the active position. and. Deny well, again, uh, Gustavo a prize there. Yeah, well, again, this is kind of the safest route right now as long as Gustavo doesn't have Nine Tails. It could be. Oh, didn't hit Nine Tails. Discarding a Welder, though, that's three down. But granted, I think the damage has already been done. Also, we saw Gustavo pick up that Victini Prism from the prizes. Yeah, very relevant uh, in case too many fire energies are discarded on the side of Yasuyuki. And you see Yasuki actually pull the Ordinary Rod to the front of his hand. Definitely going to be eyeing down that Wobbuffet again. Gustavo here. It's to see most of his deck oh, many no. different pieces. That Professor's Research did not really hit what Gustavo wanted. No Ninetales in sight. Does have a couple fire energy here, but here's just an attack. Uh, Take no down guy. the Lily's Poke Doll, and Yasuyuki escaped that turn. Yeah, kind lots of, of good cards of in there, but yeah. not exactly what Gustavo was looking for. Certainly needed that Ninetales. And we were talking about that Pokemon communication earlier. I wasn't able to find something like that to be able to find it. Opens the window a little bit for Yasuyuki to continue his game plan. Yeah, well, he has, he has more cards to... Uh, or access to more cards now because of the Intrepid Sword last turn. Already got the one card that you needed from Smooth over the turn before. So I think we might start seeing Marie, maybe Slumbering Forest come into play this turn. Uh, you also... Could eye down maybe another Slugma just because Makargo is a very big target to try to disrupt uh, Yasuyuki from Gustavo's side. Yeah, it does look like he goes for that uh, Mareep with the Quick Ball there. Discarding a Fire Energy, which is somewhat interesting given uh, the, how few Fire Energy are actually in Yasuyuki's deck. But like you said, he does play that Ordinary Rod. It, it's kind of a free discard right now, especially if he prioritizes that Wobbuffet to combat this Victini Prism. And there we are. Straight away, the or Ordinary Rod comes down. He's getting back that Wobbuffet. That was the card that you were pointing at earlier. That's the one that's going to really stop Gustavo's Victini, prevent it from attacking. Uh, and this is some of the gameplay that Yasuyuki has to go for now. All right, so here's the smooth over. Kind of brushed past the, the Slumbering Force. Might be eyeing down that Wobbuffet right now. And here we go. Straight away, pretty rapidly, searches his deck for that one. Going to put it right to the top. <laughs> it's a target for Primate Wisdom. So there we go. That uh, Wobbuffet uh, being down on the bench, it's going to nullify that Victini Prism Star. It really just kind of takes an attacker away from Gustavo in that case. Yeah, but this is the awkward spot. You're relying on this Marie to put the Heat Ran asleep, but Gustavo only has to flip one coin. If he gets a heads here, Yasuyuki's put very far behind. Yeah, I still need yeah no do. slumbering forest <laughs> in sight. Turn is not ended, so we yes. have a Bell Bell and a Bryson Bear. Yes. <laughs> was that double Nine Tails off the mill? Yasuyuki's yeah, so just going to double check. It was. Oh, wow. Oh, man. You, you, I heard Yasuyuki go, yes, yes. <laughs> so, man, that is huge. That is massive. Gustavo has been drawing cards each turn to try to find those Nine Tails. He even played a oh, Professor's yeah, so. Research the turn before to draw seven new cards, did not hit anything to even oh, yeah, search yeah, for yeah. it, and then they were just both on top of the deck. This completely changes the momentum of the game. Also, the Heatran GX it just failed its sleep flip. So it, you know, unless Gustavo can find some kind of switching effects, uh, multiple switching effects, in fact, to get that Heatran GX back into the active position, this might be the spot that uh, Yasuyuki was aiming for. 
It's like wow. Gustavo does have a switch, so he pops that Victini Prism Star into the active position. But again, it cannot attack thanks to Shady Tail here. Now we're going to see that card that we saw last game, Victini V coming down onto the field. Man, I, I still cannot believe that double Ninetales mill. Uh, that means Gustavo does not have access to Ninetales for the entire game. There is no Pokemon recovery in his deck to get that back. And that means Yasuyuki can kind of play a little safer now. Yeah, I'm not sure what the chances were that they'd hit those exact two cards out of the three uh, that were being discarded, but pretty unfortunate for Gustavo, pretty uh, lucky for Yasuyuki in that case. Yeah, and that's what you have to see uh, in some of these matchups where, like, oh, man, they have a card that just destroys me, but I can get lucky. And that's what you see Yasuki here just gets insanely lucky. Man, milling both Ninetales in this matchup has to be the dream. It's completely changed the, the course of this game, I would say. Yeah, uh, uh, now we're thinking about 10 minutes left. Yasuki is actually looking to probably win this game if everything goes right. And... Gustav, like, I don't even know if they're going to be able to make a time for a game three. Yeah, I mean, is there a way that Gustavo can potentially uh, keep himself in the game for 10 minutes? It, it depends. If Yasuki's able to chain a few Lily's Pokedolls here, Gustavo does not play Pokemon Catcher, Custom Catcher. He relies on that Nine Tails and that Nine Temptations. And this is part of the strategy Yasuyuki needs. He's played that Bell Elba and Bryson. He's getting rid of more cards from Gustavo's deck, so that is definitely the uh, supporter he wants to be playing for turn. Oh, man, this is insane. What a turn of events for this game. Very, very lucky. All calculated, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, on turn five, I'm going to mill both Nine Tails, leave you with basically nothing. <laughs> And he thought that as they were shuffling up after game one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so Gustavo here, you know, he's got that Heatran. It's able to attack every single turn, able to knock out anything on Yasuyuki's side of the board. Uh, but is it enough? Is it enough? Will he be able to get through enough Poke uh, Lily's Poke Dolls here? Yeah, you would think uh, with Gustavo at three prizes, essentially a lot of these mill decks were like, they kind of give up prizes because it's just an extra turn. And... Yes, you, you might have to do that one turn with the resource management from a Rangaroo. Okay. But yep. there's a lot of times where you just got Lily's Pokedoll, you got Mareep to put him asleep, and there's just some times where you're not going to get an attack off, and that's just even another turn. And this is an aggressive mill. It's not the mill oh, yeah. where we saw round one where you play two Belelba, but mostly it's just like I'm going to set up my board to be kind of the ultimate defense. This is like, I'm going with the ultimate attack offense. Yeah, I'll even discard my own cards if I have <laughs> yeah. to. Like, that's fine by me. Uh, so it looks like Yasuyuki, he's got that Marit back in the active spot. Again, he's forcing Gustavo to find that switch, find a way out of that sleep. You know, flip heads on the sleep check in between turns. So really, this is a very different uh, style of game to the one that we saw in the first game where Gustavo just ran away with it. Yeah, the biggest thing for Yasuki here is going to be time. Will he have enough time? to actually mill Gustavo out and steal away this match with a tie. Well, Yasuyuki is certainly hoping so. He's hoping that Gustavo is going to stay asleep in between turns. Does see a tag call come down, which will be able to find him. Uh, some of the tag, tag team supporters that he runs, and that Caitlin and Cynthia and Bell Bell and Bryson. Didn't see one in deck, though, so it looks like he's going to have to try to get those Bell Bell Bryson mans back. Yeah, so looking for the sleep flip here, most likely. Uh, has gone through, I think, a couple Lily's Poke Dolls so far. Lieutenant Surge going to come down. Such a great card for this deck when, you know, you're always behind in prizes. Yeah, so two supporters now, but we see the Cynthia and Caitlyn first one. So his hand's pretty much set up to what he wants to do. We even see the Macargo GX with another Slugma. Looks like he's discarding the Makago GX, though. You got Ordinary Rod, it's fine. Raw. Speaking of. <laughs> <laughs> right on cue. I, I've already tweeted. Quite a right? few more mm -hmm. cards there. Including one of those Lily Pokey Dolls. That's exactly what he wanted to see. But to be able to get those out of his deck. Puts the Heatran to sleep. Yeah, actually has the switch to switch into the Lily's Pokedoll as well. Kind of a, a 
I'm like, uh, okay, I'm going to put you to sleep. If that doesn't work, well, you can't get around this anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. Of course, it's just one extra step for Gustavo. He's got to wake up. He's got to get away around the Lily's Poke Doll, which we know he doesn't have because of that earlier uh, amazing, amazing discard that Yasuyuki was able to do, which is get rid of those Nine Tails from Gustavo's deck. And that's a sleep. <gasps> Who needs Slumbering Forest when your opponent just flips tails anyway? <laughs> On the first flip. The Heatran stays asleep. And here we go, Yasuyuki's going to have a little count of Gustavo's deck uh, just to see you know, how far away am I from being able to achieve that big turn of discarding all the cards that I need from your deck. Pretty hard to see how many are left. Quite a few, though, I would say. Certainly not that key number. What was it, 11 that we needed to hit to be yeah, able to... Uh, uh, 11 is the, the critical mass here. And you actually see the one escape board come down for Gustavo. It, it's just the fifth way he can get around this sleep. Does allow him to retreat while he is asleep. And for one energy less, which is quite important. Yeah, granted, although Heatran can uh, charge himself back up if he makes it back to the active spot with his ability. We've seen a few welder down, though, so getting those energy cards into play might be a little bit of a struggle for Gustavo at some point. Looks like he's just going to attack with Big Teeny V, though, and take a knockout on that Lily's Poke Doll. Not collecting a prize, unfortunately, for him. Yeah, and the biggest thing here is the fact that Wobbuffet hit the board again uh, after being knocked out, uh, like turn two, really shutting off that Victini Prism Star, which is a way to just, for Gustavo to like, essentially he could shuffle back 16 cards if he really has everything. <laughs> yeah. Looks like Yasuyuki here, deciding what he's gonna put at the top of his very thin deck. Really funny that in this aggressive mill strategy, you're actually uh, discarding your own cards as well. Oh yeah, you end up milling yourself more than your opponent. You're decking two players out. <laughs> you deck yourself out first, then you deck your opponent out. I haven't seen that Oranguru with resource management. Ah, oh, there it is. It goes back on top of the deck. Decides to continue with that strategy of putting down the po Lily's Poke Doll. And, and yet, he, this yeah. time we see a slumbering forest. Pretty big. It does mean that Gustavo needs to flip two coins now to try to wake up between turns. And with that recycle energy going back to Yasuki's hand every time he retreats, he has essentially the cards he needs to retreat every turn. But like we discussed earlier, it's a matter of time. Yeah. It's all about whether Yasuyuki can get discard all the cards from Gustavo's deck. Yeah, under four minutes to go here in game two for the entire match. And we're still on Yasuyuki's turn. He's finding all the pieces he needs now. So he's finding that Bell Bella Bryson man. He's got that Marip down. He has a Lily's Poke Doll smooth over and Primate Wisdom happening. Everything he needs to be able to execute that strategy of milling his opponent's deck. The two Ninetales are now in the discard pile as well for Gustavo. I, I still can't believe that. that that's <laughs> insane. He's got to make like, the highlight reel. Oh, yeah, for sure. There's three cards hit the discard pile for both players there with that Bill Elber and Bryson man. And again, these aggressive mill decks play high counts of pal pad. Uh, three for Yasuyuki here, and it's just one another way to, yeah, I'm going to keep hitting you with these Bill Elber and Bryson man, and I'm going to eventually deck you out, and it's going to be a lot faster than you think. Yeah, I mean, it has a dual purpose, right? You can get those supporters back, but you can also put cards back in your deck so you don't deck yourself out, so... Very clever play there. And there goes another pal pad, speaking of which. This get. turn needs to hurry up, though, if Yasuki wants to actually take the win here. Because one thing to note as well, uh, since his game plan is to mill your opponent out, they actually need to draw a card for their turn to lose the game. So one thing that could come up is time's called. You have turn zero and then one, two, three. If Yasuyuki is turn three and actually mills Gustavo out to zero cards, he'd actually lose because Gustavo doesn't have another turn to draw a card. Yeah, it's one of those things that seems really niche, but it actually comes up quite often. Seems to be some discussion about the pal pad. Big play here. Trying to deliberate. I think they're just... Because uh, he played two pal pads, so there's four... <laughs> And then he had one card in his deck. deck here, so. <laughs> so they're just trying to keep the count straight. Oh, yeah, yeah did, very, very did, thin deck there. Yeah, this is usually the yeah, sort of thing yeah, you yeah, would say, oh, that's their hand. Yeah. But no, in this case, uh, it is actually Yasuyuki's deck. 
So it looks like there's approximately 18 cards left in Gustavo's deck before this turn started. Okay. We're still out of that magical number 11. All right, well, here we go. Oh, One minute tails. left. The Victini V stays asleep. It's another element that Gustavo has to contend with here. And now this depends, too. How long does Gustavo take for his turn here? Plays down the giant hook. Could be quite crucial later on if he wants to ensure that his Pokemon are going to wake up between turns if that Mareep is going to continuously put them to sleep. He has a look through his whole deck. He has to make the decision. Is he actually going to take any cards out of that deck? No. And, okay, this is the biggest thing. If Gustavo is turn zero, it lowers Yasuki's chances of winning astronomically. Essentially, Gustavo needs to pass, and Yasuki needs to draw a card to become turn zero. And we're approaching that moment. There are 15 seconds. And there's the roll. Does. But remember, Yasuki needs to draw a card to start his turn here. He has eight seconds to do it. OK. All right, all right. Turn zero, that's a little bit better. That means he'll have an extra turn for just Gustavo to actually draw into a decked out deck. Yeah, an extra opportunity. Gustavo's going to draw for turn one and draw for turn three as well. So you have to think here, what's his uh, best strategy going to be? Of course, he's going to want to continuously put that Marie, put the Victini V to sleep. Well, so the Victini, yeah, it woke up last turn. So uh, it's very important. But you also don't really care too much. Now you're just like, I need to get my mill plan right now. Uh, it, it's going to be, I'm going to Lieutenant Surge, Belobo and Bryson Man twice this turn. Well, here we go. Here's the Lieutenant Surge. And does he have two Belobo and Bryson Mans to play down as well to really discard as many and, cards as he can from Gustavo's deck? And then I think we're going to see Lily's Pokedoll go back under the deck. So it's going to be the one card left in y Yasuyuki's deck. He's going to promote something that can free retreat with Air Balloon. Probably even the Mareep if he has it in his hand. There's and then he's going to have to resource management to try to set up a big turn. But, oh, man, he needs the, the Macargo GX as well. And yet we don't see a Slugma down in play. It looks like there might be 10 or fewer cards left in Gustavo's deck. Looks like 12 in deck right now. Looks like one in Yasuyuki's deck. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's the power of Lily's Pokedoll as well. It's really enabling these strategies. And there we go. There's a Slugma. Comes down onto the bench. Ordinary Rod going to put a couple of cards back into the deck. But does Yasuki actually have enough Belelba and Bryson Man left to pull off a big mill next turn? Well, we just saw two played this turn, so it's really going to come down to the wire, I think. Yeah. Uh, Yasuki being turn zero here is the biggest for him. We're going to see that Makago, and it looks like a fire energy being eyed up as targets to put back into the deck. And as we talked about, that GX move so powerful, going to mill many decks, uh, many cards, sorry, from Gustavo's deck if he's able to attack with it. Well, he'll mill many decks throughout the tournament, too. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's true. He hopes so. So I think only shuffling in the two cards, remember, you can choose one or both from Ordinary Rod. So opting to get those fire energies so you can guarantee it for next turn with that GX attack. Yeah, especially in combination with Smooth Over as well. Just in case, just in case there's that one card that you miss. Here we go. This is pretty, um, pretty intense, actually. I want to see if he's able to do it. Turn zero, one, two, three. Yeah, and there's so clarifying. He's like, Who's all right, I have enough turns, but he needs to play it perfectly here. And trying to do that against one of the best players in the world right now, it's pretty hard. Yeah, on, on an international championship stage, too. So there goes a flip for a uh, check to see if the Victini V wakes up. It does wake up. But that doesn't matter. Uh, Gustavo has three prizes. There's no way for him to actually really win the game, especially with no access to nine tails but i think that's pretty big he just pal padded back in two supporter cards so that's oh, two more no. cards two more cards wow. that yasuyuki has to discard I should bet into this zone. and i don't know if he has enough resources left to do it <laughs> okay yeah yeah i i think that might have yeah, just yeah, yeah, put yeah, gustavo put over the edge more. here mm. <laughs> but i didn't playing down a pokemon communication 
Oh, Showing look, another yeah, card going back in, and I think we've reached side. a critical mass. Remember, Yasuyuki is only able to mill at max 11 cards in a turn. And we just saw three cards go back in, which effectively uh, means that's a Bill Elber and Bryson uh, Man, an extra uh, one that he's uh, forced to play to discard those three cards. It's going to have a look now. It's going to count. I think I saw nine. Yeah. That, that, might, be a, that might be enough. Well, it depends if there's more Bilalba hiding out in Yasuyuki's hand. But he just had to... But this is the turn to do it. This is the final turn that Yasuyuki has to discard all the cards in Gustavo's deck. He has to do it on this turn. I, I, I think he only has access to eight. The, the GX attack from Macargo GX and then one Bilalba in his hand. Ooh. Don't I tell don't me he's going to be one away. Going to be one away. No Lieutenant Surge in sight for Yasuyuki and not being able to use resource management at all for these two games has really put a lot of stress on Yasuyuki. You see him just <laughs> deliberately, like, so close. The pal pad in combination with the Pokemon communication put Gustavo in the winner's seat for this match. And you can see them both thinking about it. They're both, they're both in good spirits, though. They're both laughing. Thinking, was I one away? Was I two away? Am I able to do it? Oh, but yeah, man. I only see that one Bryson, oh. uh, Bell Elber and Bryson man in the, uh, in his hand. There's no way for me to win. It's actually yes. gone for the so uh, Cynthia and Caitlyn. This is Yasuyuki's last turn here. Uh, and it is unfortunate to see, but man. Draw three. Almost pulled it off. Very, very close. And I think that's as exciting as a mill, uh, a mill deck gets, actually. If only there was a little bit more time left on the clock this game would have been for sure in Yasuyuki's favor. But Gustavo playing the clock well, playing the game well, and is able to overcome the mill of two Ninetales. So it looks like we're going to go for the GX move here. Uh, my of Makago GX, which is usually the attack oh, sorry, that's used yeah. at the end of the game by these kinds of decks uh, to, to, to end the game and to win. But in this case, Gustavo had enough cards to outlast. And Gustavo passes the turn. Uh, that is turn three. Gustavo will take the victory here, 1-0. and oh. Yeah, and he moves on to a 3-0 and oh record, which is really respectable at this kind of international championships. Uh, puts you in really good stead for the rest of the tournament, really. And I think a lot of people, it's the first few rounds that really get them nervous. Do you know what I mean? They yeah. have no idea what they're going to come up against. Uh, they, they're not 100% sure that their deck's going to work on the day. Um, but yeah, really, really interesting match, that one, because it was really back and forth, especially in that second game. Yeah, well, you see how powerful Gustavo's deck was in game one, thanks to that Ninetales. Nine